What's up everyone, it's your boy Nornrad89 here bringing you another rad movie review today to talk about an awesome Japanese mystery thriller film from the 90s that I've kind of been putting on the back burner. This is one of those films that have been slowly building up anticipation over the years. I've heard great, great reviews for this film and it's one that just kind of bypassed me for years and years. And like I said, it's always been on my list to watch and I finally bit the bullet and watched it and today we're going to talk about Perfect Blue. This is directed by Satoshi Kon. If you're not familiar with him, he's done the works of, of films like Paprika and Millennium Actress. So if you're familiar with this, those films, you know what kind of art style and what kind of work and what he does you're going to get into when you get into this movie. But today you're going to hear my positives, the negatives, the rating, and then I'm going to send you all home. So let's do this. Roll it. Perfect Blue came out in 1997. This is a Japanese mystery thriller film, a great animation film, and this one has a lot of horror elements as well in it. Our central story follows Mima, who is a uh, singer for a J-pop group, a very famous J-pop group called Cham. She ends up deciding to leave that group, though, and pursue acting, and this film has a lot to do with kind of exploitation, also obsession with like obsessed fans and stalking and all that kind of stuff and also the psychological thriller and horror aspect of kind of losing oneself and really you know in in the pop and, and physical world when you get into that world you kind of view yourself through the audience's eyes and it's like who are you really so there's all those kind of elements come into play with this movie and our main character Mima who we're following around so yeah this film has a lot to offer and like I said is quite the ride and like I said going into positives right away this is like a dream style sequence type film you know it's like a fever dream it's one of those movies that really does toe the line of what is real and what isn't and they do a really good job of doing that too because when Mima when she leaves the pop star J-pop group Cham, she ends up becoming an actress and they do these things where they just kind of don't really tell you when they're cutting to certain scenes so they'll cut into a certain scene where she's acting in the television show because that's the job that she gets but then you don't know if it's real if it's part of her real life you know it's like said the film does a really good job of blurring the lines of fantasy and reality also we must talk the art style like for me i'm a sucker for a 90s art style like said yu haka show cowboy bebop like dragon ball z all that early stuff a lot of the 90s animes trigun like a lot of that stuff I am a fan of that stuff because I like the drawing style, the details, the background, the way the characters look. And like I said, this film has a really specific art style and a really good look to it. It also has very haunting imagery. Like this film actually has some scenes in it that will stick in your mind because of the imagery, because of the way the characters are drawn or the certain brutality of scenes because this film isn't like I said, it's not horror like all kinds like there's not a lot of gruesome gore but there is like i said i must say uh trigger warning there is a uh sa scene there's an sa scene in here so that's a trigger warning for you all but there also are also some really good intense moments that happen in this movie and they kind of come out of nowhere and when they happen they're done in such a visceral way that it takes you like off your seat and you're just like whoa you it takes you back so you're like damn it really sticks out and hits you so I like the way this film toes the line of the different genres that it plays with, like be it thriller, psychological horror, but also mystery. It does a great job towing the line with all those tones, I think. I also must talk about positives is that this is one of those films that actually had me just quite happy with how good it was. You know, there's always that risk of when you put a certain film on the back burner for years and years and years and you kind of build up that anticipation, there's always that huge risk of you watching the film and because of you building up that anticipation for years you're underwhelmed with the product that you see but this film actually did like i said it met me it met a lot of anticipation a lot of expectations i had it met 
in all those areas and exceeded in a lot of areas because of how fantastical it was and how the journey it took me on was so unique, so different from anything I've seen. A lot of people compare this to Black Swan because Darren Aronofsky has said that he had this in his mind when he was writing Black Swan, the script, that this was a, the kind of movie that he was thinking about, which I find that quite fascinating. That's really cool. I do enjoy that thought. But this is also, like I said, one of those things that I kind of view it like, you know, like a little bit of selena with the whole obsession of a fan or somebody that gets obsessed with you and starts stalking you and all that kind of stuff and the psychosis that you go through because there's this great part in this film where mima's reading this online story that's being wrote by her obsessed fan who's stalking her and is writing all the stuff that she does throughout her day but is posting it online and she's reading it in this chat room so this film does a really good job too of kind of really dating itself but in a good way you know what i mean it has that specific time period that it exists in and i like that factor like i said some people might not like that because it doesn't age well the film very much dates itself but i love it because it's very much of its time well let's talk about some mixed in negatives and there really isn't a lot this is one of those films that i had to quite like really search my soul to find like some negatives and there really is some to be honest one that i must say is i feel like there's some underdevelopment for some of our characters there's something that happens in the third act that i i don't want to spoil it because i want a lot of you to go out and search this movie and watch this movie because i highly recommend this movie this film is streaming on shutter just in case if you want to go check it out that's where you can find it but yeah there are some undercooked characters is that that's how i would describe it and when it comes to the third act it comes into play play a little bit I still had fun and I was enjoying the ride and there is a great third act but like I said it could have been more potent if we had some more development for some characters another thing is I think this film could have done with being a little bit longer like I actually was enjoying the ride this film's about an hour and 22 minutes and we could have had maybe 10 or 12 minutes and that could have helped out with the whole diving into more of those other characters and even getting us more attached with the story and our lead character and going through her psychosis and really feeling that third act even more. So I think this film could have been longer and that would have definitely helped it out as well. Another softcore negative, this is just a very softcore one, is that this isn't one of those films that you're going to return to all the time. I can see huge fans of this film and people championing this film and they're like, I can watch this anytime, but I, I could watch really gruesome and brutal stuff. But in terms of the story and the intensity of the story and the journey that this film takes you on, this isn't one of those movies that you're going to be like, oh, I just watched it today. Let's go back. Let's watch it right now again, again, like I said. But yeah, it still is a really fantastic film, like I said, be it that I think this is Satoshi's first movie and this is a fantastic fantastic debut film is this if this was your first film like i would be as a filmmaker thoroughly happy and impressed with how this film came out because like i said this was a fantastic ride so let's nail down the rating i know you want to hear the rad rating for perfect blue this film's going to get an 8.5 out of 10 in my book that's a very strong rating like i said an 8.5 i highly recommend going out and watching this film like i said it's streaming on shutter like i said just soft core there is some essay scenes so like i said you know trigger warning if that will bother you even though it is an anime i know that could bother some people so there is a trigger warning for that but this film like i said the journey it took me on the tones the the gruesome nature of some of the scenes but also the beautiful imagery that we have in this movie and like I said the psychological thriller like ride that it takes you on i was just all there for it and like i said it really met a lot of my expectations like i said especially for being a film that i've been thinking about for about four or five years now so thanks for sticking around with me all for my review of Perfect Blue. I hope you all enjoyed this review, and please let me know down in the comment section if you've seen this gem. Let me know your thoughts on this film. Is this one that, like I said, you're highly invested in, you really think is a achievement in cinema, or you just don't connect with this film? Like, Because I haven't really talked to anybody out there that has huge negatives or hates this movie like I said but you know there's always some people out there that feel completely different we all have different opinions that's some of the best things about us but please like the video that definitely helps out the channel subscribe if you're new to the channel and have that notification bell poked so you're notified 
anytime I drop a video because we're going to be keeping the content rolling. I got some other Courage the Cowardly Dog deep dives that are going to be coming out on the channel. I got some other, maybe other some ideas in the pipeline of some other series that I'm going to start. But also for the channel recently, I think because of this Perfect Blue review, I think I'm going to start doing some more anime horror films and start tackling them on the channel and talking about them because I think some of these films deserve more eyes. But you all know, most importantly, what's up? Have a safe and happy day. Peace out.